Hi, I'm Antoine Walker. I play forward for the Boston Celtics. Before the age of 21, Antoine Walker was an NCAA champion, a top 10 NBA draft pick, and a millionaire. Because of his basketball skills, he was able to earn over $108 million in his career, but that money would soon be all gone. Let's talk about Antoine Walker's rise as an NBA player, his fall, and what he is doing today. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about the story, but I have not seen a video talking about his basketball career. But first, if you have not subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel. Once the basketball regular season starts, I'm going to be dropping more current topic videos and be on the lookout for some NBA preview videos that I will be dropping in a couple days. Antoine Walker was drafted 6th overall by the Boston Celtics in the 1996 NBA Draft. Walker was a 6'9 small forward out of Kentucky who could play multiple positions, but he preferred and enjoyed staying out on the perimeter and pulling jump shots. I will break down his love for shooting threes later in the video. In his rookie year, the team did terrible. The Celtics had their worst record in franchise history, 15 wins and 67 losses. But individually, Antoine Walker found some success. He scored 17.5 points per game, pulled down 9 rebounds, dished out 3 assists, and shot 42% from the field. Walker was picked to the all-rookie first team. In Walker's second NBA season, he saw a lot of success. The Celtics played a lot better, but still were not good enough to make the playoffs. They jumped up to 36 wins. Antoine was picked to that year's All-Star Game and finished the season averaging a double-double. His final numbers were 22 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists on 42% shooting. But the Celtics needed to find somebody to pair up with Walker, so that year Boston took Paul Pierce in the 1998 NBA Draft and they were the Celtics' one-two punch on offense for the next five years. Pierce and Walker would put up some good individual numbers on some nights in their first few years together, but it never translated to winning throughout the season. The team defense wasn't good, and Walker's inefficient shooting wouldn't help either. Antoine never saw a jump shot he didn't like. He was talented and could score, but he was a chuck. He really didn't like getting down in the post. He liked to bring up the ball and pull up shots. There was a shift in his style of play. Check this graphic right here of his three-point attempts per game in these years. In the 1998-1999 season, he shot four threes per game on 36.9% shooting. That was really efficient. The best three-point shooting team that year would shoot 37%. Then the next year, Antoine went down the three and a half threes per game on 25% shooting. He was really bad at shooting threes that year. Now the next two years, check the shift. This isn't just a small bump on attempts. This is a huge change. He doubles his three-point attempts, going up from seven, then to eight threes a night the next year. Antoine Walker shooting so many three-point shots bothered some people. Why isn't a six-foot-nine small forward getting into the paint more? A reporter asked him, why do you take so many three-point shots, Antoine? He responded by saying, because there are no fours. Paul Pierce, Antoine, and the Celtics would finally see success and end their seven-year playoff drought in the 2001-2002 season. Boston won 49 games and nearly got to the NBA Finals, but they lost to the Nets in the Eastern Conference Finals in six games. Here are Antoine's per game averages from that year. 22 points, eight rebounds, and five assists. He made the All-Star game that year, but like most of his career, his efficiency numbers were really bad. Check his numbers here from that season. He shot below 40% from the field and he was taking 20.9 field goal attempts a night that season. Nearly 21 shots a night to get 22 points. That's a lot of shots, man. Antoine played only one more year with the Celtics before being traded to the Dallas Mavericks a week before the start of the 2003-2004 season. He started all 82 games for the Mavs, but this is when his days as an all-star were gone. Like every other year, his efficiency numbers were simply not good enough for someone who takes as many shots as he does. He took 13.8 shots per game that year and averaged 14 points. In the 2004-2005 year, Walker was traded to the Hawks where he played half the season. At the trade deadline, he was traded back to the Celtics where he would reunite with Paul Pierce. In the 05 summer, Antoine was involved in the largest trade in NBA history. It involved 13 players and five teams. He was traded to the Miami Heat. It was in Miami where he would contribute off the bench to their playoff run and championship. In the game six win over Dallas, he came off the bench and dropped 14 points 
and grabbed 11 rebounds. The next year, his last year with the Heat, Antoine lost a lot of his mobility and quickness at his size. Antoine was up to 245 pounds and averaged 8.5 points per game on 39% shooting. Before the start of the 07 season, he was traded to the Timberwolves. He only played 46 games. The next year in 2008, Walker was traded to the Grizzlies in the Kevin Love and OJ Mayo swap. He only played in two preseason games for Memphis. He was inactive for two months and was eventually waived by Memphis. His NBA career was over. Walker had earned over $108 million in his 12-year NBA career, but he loved to spend what he earned. He spent a lot of money on cars, jewelry, and homes. Antoine said that he would always keep six to seven cars. If he would see a guy pull up in the lot with a new car, he would say, maybe I like that and go get it. Antoine also helped about 30 people close to him move to better situations, and he gave them cash all the time. He said in an interview, I gave them whatever they wanted and spoiled them. You can't do that. It ended up being an open ATM throughout my career. He was also a big time gambler, but it wasn't something he picked up as a hobby until he was years into his NBA career. One summer when he was training with Michael Jordan, that's all I need to say, but that's when he started to become addicted to gambling. He would go to the casino with Michael and saw him wager big amounts. Walker got a rush from that. He was arrested in 2009 for $800,000 of gambling debt, but Antoine claims that that was not the main reason of his financial loss. His real estate firm in Chicago was hit hard by the financial crisis in 2008, and it did not help that the guy he trusted to run the buildings didn't pay the mortgages and the buildings weren't repaired. Walker ended up being forced to pay back about $20 million to banks. In 2010, he filed for bankruptcy. That year, he also tried making an NBA comeback at 34, but no team signed him. He was eventually picked up by the Iowa Stampede. He would play two years with them in the D-League. Today, Antoine Walker is out of bankruptcy and using his experiences to talk to people about his mistakes. He has some advice that he hopes the younger generation will listen to. He says, think about the future, not just the here and now. You can still enjoy your life to the fullest but let's preserve some of that wealth for your kids and for their kids. And yeah, that's the story about Antoine Walker, a three-time NBA All-Star who earned $108 million, then lost it all. Right now, he's a commentator for the SEC Network on ESPN. Even though Antoine was a high volume, low efficiency scorer for most of his career, he was really effective when things were going well. He was a really good rebounder, he had good passing skills, and was really mobile for his size. I think if he played in today's NBA and was coached the right way, he probably could have been a really versatile stretch four in small ball lineups. But that's just a what if scenario and his flaws as a player limited his ceiling. If you're still here, shout out to you. Again, subscribe if you have not already. I will be dropping some NBA preview videos soon, like I said in the beginning, and I'll see you guys then.